they don't really like me Cause I go fuck your bitch and fuck your mom and I This video will cover six child stars who had a terrible life after fame. And we're going to begin by talking about Jake Lloyd, who played Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Jake was chosen to play Anakin from 3,000 potential candidates and would perform so well in the billion dollar movie that he won the best performance in a feature film for an actor under the age of 10. While this might have implied that Jake had a promising film career ahead of him, he'd appear in only one more movie after Star Wars before announcing his acting retirement at the age of 12, explaining that he was bullied heavily as a result of the role. Yeah. My entire school life was really a living hell and I had to do up to 60 interviews a day. That's Other children issue. were really mean to me. They would make the sound of the lightsaber every time they saw me, with this kind of harassment even continuing into Jake's high school and college experience. You know how they can be in high school. They're so charming and intelligent. College has been similar. They wouldn't let it go. In other interviews, Jake had been warned about the common path taken by child celebrities Child stars have had a bit of a, a reputation that they turn to, you know, a life of drugs, so may the force be with you. Oh, well, thank you. Yet this advice seemed to have no impact as his life began to go downhill beginning in 2015. Jake Lloyd has schizophrenia, stopped taking his medication, yeah. and attacked his mother. Indianapolis police were called to the home. I must have schizophrenia police, because I'm the realest in the room. six year old showed up and yelled at her, saying she ruined his life. Lloyd allegedly knocked her down when she wouldn't let him in the house and stomped her three or four times, causing bruises and abrasion. God damn! By the time the police showed up and she didn't press charges. The Only fuck, nigga? Later, Jake Lloyd found himself Yo, in a police chase, after which he'd be arrested for reckless driving, driving without a license and resisting arrest, resulting in 10 months jail time in a psychiatric facility. Two years after this, Jake Yeah, he needs to be in a psychiatric facility. He, need, he should have been in that when he fucking assaulted his mother. mother. ...to release a statement regarding Jake's well-being. Jake has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, but unfortunately he also also has a symptom called anosognosia, which causes a lack of insight into his illness. This only adds to the wow. struggle he faces, which has been very difficult after the tragic loss of his younger sister, Madison. He has moved closer to his family and we are all working hard to help him with this. He is still a kind and caring person and we hope to have him back to his fun and entertaining self as soon as possible. Jake will continue to make progress with the love and support you continue to show, which is promising when compared to the life of Edward Furlong. After playing John Connor in the the Terminator 2, Furlong began to mess with drugs, stating, Hollywood F me up, man. Lots of money and lots of free coke will turn anybody into a cokehead, with this addiction resulting in his first arrest for driving under the influence without a license. Furlong attended rehab as a result of the incident and was able to stay sober for a number of years. However, by 2009, at the age of 32, he was back in the news for punching his girlfriend whilst on drugs. Three <coughs> years later, Furlong was arrested again, this time for domestic abuse against his new girlfriend, resulting in a further six months in prison, Bro. where he'd pick up a meth addiction, Ugh. although this story actually has somewhat of a happy ending. In July 2022, Furlong announced that he had gotten his teeth fixed, was taking better care of himself, and had been sober for over four years. I'm much happier now, man. I mean, it feels so good to uh, at That's least good. be doing the best you can. Although this kind of happy ending has been unavailable to Drake Bell. No, Drake Bell is out of pocket. Worse every single year since he Drake Bell is out of pocket. Gosh. In 2014, approximately seven years after the show came to an end, Drake Bell announced that he was filing for bankruptcy, causing a foreclosure on his $2 million mansion. One year later in 2015, he'd be jailed for four days as a result of driving under the influence. However, the real drama didn't begin until mid-2020 when his ex-girlfriend would upload a video on TikTok, making some pretty severe accusations. Imagine the worst type of verbal abuse you could ever imagine, and that was what I got. It then turned into physical, hitting, throwing, everything. Um, at the pinnacle of it, he drugged me down the stairs of our house in Los Feliz. My face hit every step on the way down. Draco would defend himself by stating, I never abused my ex-girlfriend or did so many of the other things Melissa falsely claimed on her TikTok video. Unfortunately, we both called each other terrible names, as often happens when couples are breaking up, but that is it. Although this response most certainly didn't put 
put an end to the drama, as there was even bigger trouble just around the corner. An article titled Drake Bell's Alleged Victim Accuses Him of Grooming explained that he was embroiled in a legal battle for engaging in a relationship with a 15-year-old girl back in 2017. Things became even worse when footage of the trial was uploaded to YouTube. How do you put count two disseminating matter harmful to juveniles, first degree misdemeanor? Guilty. Let the record reflect defendant has pled guilty. The court accepts that plea. And while he would plead guilty to child endangerment, Drake Bell would then take to his Instagram to insinuate that he hadn't done anything wrong. I don't believe the media if these claims were remotely true, my situation would be very different. I would not be here at home with my wife and, uh, and my son. Despite finishing by stating that he was at home with his wife, this relationship would last only one more year, as in January 2023, on top of everything that had already happened, Drake Bell announced that he was also getting a divorce. Considering he's acted in only two productions since 2020, it's safe to say that Drake Bell's reputation is pretty much finished, although he's not the only Nickelodeon actor with a spot in this video as the life of Amanda Bynes has descended into a version of hell. Despite having one of the most famous faces throughout the 2000s, Amanda Bynes would announce her retirement from acting in 2010, stating that being an actress isn't as fun as it may seem. If I don't love something- Amanda show was my I'm shit when I was a I don't fucking love kid. Anymore, so I've stopped doing it. I know 24 is a young age to retire, but you heard it here first. She'd go on to state that the retirement was because I literally couldn't stand my appearance in Easy A and I didn't like my performance. I was absolutely convinced that I needed to stop acting after seeing it. However, this is where things began to go downhill rapidly. In 2012, two years after retiring, she was charged with driving under the influence and hit and run on two separate occasions. Two years after this, she'd be charged with driving under the influence again, with her court appearance displaying a significant physical decline from just two years prior. In the process, Amanda would take to Twitter to call Michelle and Barack Obama ugly before stating that she and her parents would no longer speak which accompanied some absolutely wild accusations about her father, including the statement that he had put a microchip in her brain. After she'd also set fire to a driveway, Amanda was put in a mental hospital, after which her parents were given legal ownership over her $5 million estate, as she Amanda has been up. spending large oh. amounts of her savings. It has been reported that she's recently made extensive purchases as gifts from jewelry stores, such as Cartier, for strangers. Amanda Bynes was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and would attend to get her life back on track by enrolling in fashion school. However, she was kicked out only 10 months later for showing up high and arguing with her classmates. In 2018, people assumed that she was back to her normal self as Amanda showed up in magazines looking like this. However, within a year, she'd gotten face tattoos and checked into Alcoholics Anonymous, where she'd meet her new boyfriend who, according to Amanda, had just as many problems as her. In October 2022, she'd make another attempt at fixing her life by enrolling in cosmetics school, yet only five months later in March 2023, she was sent to a mental hospital once again as she was found roaming the streets of Los Angeles without any clothes on. Oh my then God, there was Orlando bro. Brown, whose role as Eddie Thomas on That's So Raven ended with an equally terrible life. After the show came to an end in right, Orlando Brown had a, Orlando began a crazy downfall, but he turned himself around. Was kept fairly private until he'd enter news headlines approximately nine years later. Between February and March 2016, Brown was arrested on two separate occasions on charges of domestic violence, obstruction of justice, drug possession with the intent to sell, and possession of contraband in jail. In February 2016, cops claimed he struck his then-girlfriend in the parking lot of a police station and was found by officers to be in possession of methamphetamine. Orlando was given a notice to appear in court, yet he'd instead flee to Las Vegas, where he was caught by bounty hunters. You left California. It's a felony when you flee. You, what, what are you doing here then, brother? You got a warrant for your arrest. After which things only became worse. A video was released of Orlando being kicked out of a friend's house after lasting only a week in rehab, which was followed by his appearance on the Dr. Phil show, during which he'd state that he'd been sober for four years, despite clearly being under the influence on the show. I'm four years sober for a reason. Yeah, that nigga was I just know that fucked I rehab, up on the show. I just got out of a, a ER. I just got out of, I'm not doing... No more time away from my kids other than I need you. As a result of this episode, Orlando would return to rehab and get clean before discussing his experience on the No Jumper podcast. I had two year binge of something that I should have never, ever indulged in. Meth? 
yes, those situations, man, they, they will never happen again based off of the fact that where I'm trying to go. And while he'd end his statement by stating that those situations will never happen again, Orlando was back in the news approximately seven months later in December 2022 after threatening a family member with a hammer. He's currently undertaking a psychiatric assessment to see if he's eligible for pleading insanity. Yet the most That's tragic crazy. story of child fame without a doubt comes from Judy Garland, who played Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz at the age of 16. Wow. While filming the movie, she was prescribed amphetamines to keep up with the production's grueling schedule, as well as barbiturates to help. One of the first the famous child actors for real? Over. The studio also required Judy to stay incredibly thin, feeding her nothing but soup and lettuce leaves whilst on set, which she'd explained led to a poor self-image. Wow. By the time The Wizard of Oz was finished, she was being prescribed amphetamines from four different doctors to keep her weight down and her mood up, although this lifestyle began to catch up to her. That's so crazy. They was, late to work, and it it was doing her dirty as shit. She'd be fired from three different movies for intoxication and was constantly in the news for being completely broke. Her kids stated that the family couldn't even afford food at times, which accompanied angry slurred messages about being paid for work. These weren't delusions. She was broke when she recorded this and not movie star down to my last Rolls Royce broke, homeless broke. No money to buy food broke. By the time Judy Garland was in her yeah, 40s, yeah. she looked about 15 years older, had been divorced five different times, and was performing in a New York bar for $100 per oh night. Oh my Judy Garland God. Judy she had never done anything wrong in her entire life. The only mistake Holy I ever did, shit. The only I ever did was sing over the rainbow. She would die of an overdose at the age of 47 on the exact same drug that she was prescribed during The Wizard of Oz, with her estate being worth a measly $50,000. Wow. That is fucking crazy as shit.